in this section we are going to cover the change of basis. Basically, if I have an orthonormal basis set and I have another orthonormal basis set, a vector in the, uh, my n-dimensional vector space will have components in the first orthonormal basis set, will have uh, other components in the new or the second orthonormal basis set, and we're going to see the operations to change or to find the coordinates in the new orthonormal basis set if I know the original components. We're going to start this by just showing you how this is done in R2, in a two-dimensional vector space. So a vector in a two-dimensional vector space has two components, u1 and u2. u1 is the component of u in the direction of u1, and u2 is the component of u in the direction of u2. So I can write the vector u as u1 multiplied by the vector e1 plus u2 multiplied by the vector e2. It's very important to know that e1 and e2 are vectors, u1 and u2 are real numbers. You can think of the component u1 as the projection of u on the vector e1. The projection of u on the vector e1 gives me u1. And so u dot e1, and u, I can use the representation u1, e1 plus u2, e2, dot e1, and because the dot product is a linear operation, I can basically um, say that this is equal to u1, e1 dot e1, plus u2, e2 dot e1. But I know that the, the basis set is orthonormal, which means that e1 has a length of 1, and e2 and e1 are perpendicular to each other. Because they are perpendicular to each other, this term goes, because e2 is perpendicular to e1, and I'm left with e1, e1 dot e1, but e1 dot e1 has, uh, is equal to 1, because e1 has a length of 1, so this is equal to u1. And so I can represent u as equal to uh, the projection of u on e1 in the direction of e1, plus the projection of u on e2 in the direction of e2. So this is equal to u1 e1 plus u2 e2. This can be extended to any n-dimensional vector space. If I have an orthonormal basis set, B, with n orthonormal vectors, any vector u in the space can have one of the two representations. u is equal to a component u1 in the direction of e1, plus a component u2 in the direction of e2, and so on, which is equal to the sum i equal 1 to n, ui, ei, or Instead of u1, I can simply just use the dot product, u dot e1, which will give me the component u1. So u dot e1, e1, plus u dot e2, e2, and so on, plus u dot en in the direction of en. So this is equal to the sum from i equal 1 to n, u dot ei in the direction of ei. It's very important not to confuse the different variables that you see in front of you here u, e1, e2, and so on, up to en, are vectors. u1, u2, u3, and un are real numbers, which are the components of the vector u in the basis, orthonormal basis set b. So now we want to see what happens when I change the basis? So if I have one orthonormal basis set made out of E1 and E2, U will have the representation U1, E1 plus U2, E2. If I have another orthonormal basis set, E prime 1, E prime 2, the vector keeps its direction, I just have a different basis. And so this vector, I'm just putting U prime right now, just to differentiate. But in fact, u and u prime are the same. u prime is equal to u prime 1, u, e prime 1, plus u prime 2, e prime 2, and u prime 1 and u prime 2 are these new components. But the vector stays the same. It's the same vector, but I'm changing the basis. What I'm interested in is what is the relationship between these components and the original components u1 and u2. I will adopt this uh, representation, u has components u1 and u2, 
U prime has components U prime one and U prime two. Of course, these components are not the same, so U, U is not equal to U prime. If I use this representation, and I'm interested in the relationship between those two component forms. So first, let's find the first component. The first component, or the first new component for U, U prime. So U prime one. U prime one is equal to the dot product between U prime and E prime one. But I, for U prime, I can use U one E one plus U two E two. And then, because the dot product is a linear operation, I'm, I'm, I'm able to take this inside. And I'm also, the dot product is a symmetric operation. E1 dot E prime 1 is equal to E prime 1 dot E1. I'm going to have it looking like this. E prime 1 dot E1 and E1 plus E prime 1 dot E2 U2. So as you can see here, I'm able to start getting a relationship between U prime 1 u1 and u2. Similarly, u prime 2 is equal to u prime dot e prime 2, and I can, for u prime, I can use the vector u1 e1 plus u2 e2. I can use this representation, and this is dot e prime 2. Again, I can use the fact that the dot product is a linear operation, and I can, and it's also symmetric, so e, e1 dot e prime 2 is actually equal to e prime 2 dot e1 and I can put this u1 outside here and so on e prime 2 dot e2 u2. So I've rewritten the last equations here again and there's a reason why we have written it in this way because now I'm going to extract these and put them in a matrix form. So u prime 1 here u prime 2 here, and I'm going to take the first component and put it here, the second component and put it here, and this third component and put it here, and this fourth component and put it here. So this is a matrix multiplied by u1, u2, and I'm going to call this matrix Q. I'm going to try to understand the properties of this matrix. Q has the components. The first one is e prime 1 dot e1, e prime 1 dot e2, and so on. The first row is actually the components of the vector e prime 1, because I know that e prime 1, if I express it in terms of the other basis vector, just similar to how we did it with a regular vector, I'm going to take the dot product between e prime 1 and e1 to give me the first component in the direction of e1, and then the second component in the direction of e2. And similarly, the second row is actually the components of the vector e prime 2. e prime 2 is equal to uh, the first component in the direction e1 and the second component in the direction e2. And because these e prime 1 and e prime 2 are actually orthonormal basis vectors, which means the length is equal to 1, of the length of each is equal to 1 and they are perpendicular to each other, then we right away know that q is an orthogonal tensor and we will study this later in uh, um, when we study mat matrices. And therefore, the Q or Q transpose is equal to I, or Q transpose Q is equal to I. I'm going to extend this now and show you that it also applies to a higher dimensional vector space with dimension N. If P is an orthonormal basis set and B prime is another orthonormal basis set, then each row of matrix Q is the components of the vector E prime 1 when it's expressed in terms of the original basis set, so e prime 1 dot e1, e prime 1 dot e2, and so on. And the second row is the expression of e prime 2 in terms of the original basis vectors, and so on. So each row is the representation of the corresponding vector in terms of the old vectors. In particular, the component ij is equal to e prime i dot ej. So any component here is equal to i is the row and j is the column. I need to prove two statements. The first statement is q, q transpose is equal to i. And the second statement I want to prove is that u prime, which are the components of u prime using the new orthonormal basis set, 
is equal to this matrix Q multiplied by U, which are the components in the old basis set. To prove the stacking statement, we're going to use the Kronecker delta that we introduced in the mathematical preliminaries. The Kronecker delta, as a reminder, is equal to 1 when I is equal to J, and is equal to 0 when I is not equal to J. So delta ij, which is the chronic current delta, is equal to e prime i dot e prime j. And the reason why that is, is because e prime i, e prime j, this is an orthonormal basis set. And so if i is equal to j, so e prime i dot e prime i, this will give me 1 because the length of the vector is equal to 1. Otherwise, if e, I, e prime i is not equal to e prime j, or i is not equal to j, so these are two different vectors, they will be perpendicular to each other. I'm going to represent e prime i in the original basis set. So e prime i, this is the component of e prime i in the direction of the vector k. So this is its component, and this is the vector e k, and this is summed from k equal 1 to n. Similarly, e prime j, I will take the, the component of e prime j in every basis vector. So this is the component, and in the direction of e l and this is summed from l equal 1 to n and these two have the dot product in between them because of the linearity of the operations remember that this is actually a number and this is actually a number and i'm left with ek dot el so i'm left with this this is this this one is that one and then ek dot el now, e, k, dot, e, l, these are the original basis vectors. The original basis vector is also orthonormal, and so e, k, dot, e, l is going to give me the Kronecker delta, k, l, because if k is equal to l, this will give me 1, otherwise it is going to give me 0. And because I'm summing from k and l equal 1 to n, this is only equal to 1 when k is equal to l, Otherwise, it's equal to 0. So basically, I can replace k with l and sum only over k. So every time I see l, I replace it with k. And so now I'm left with this, the sum from k equal 1 to n, e prime i dot e k, e prime j dot e k. And this is the component q i k. And this is the component q j k. And so you can see this is the sum from k equal 1 to n q i k q j k this is equal to the Kronecker delta so let's see what that means q i k q j k this is equal to taking the components in the i row and the components in the j row and multiplying them by each other because when k is equal 1 i'm multiplying q i 1 multiplied by q j 1 plus q i 2 multiplied it by q j2 and so on and so the rows of q are actually orthonormal because if i if if i is equal to j i'm going to get one if i is not equal to j i'm going to get zero and therefore q q transpose is equal to i the second statement can be proven as follows the component u prime i is equal to the vector u dot e prime i and the vector u can have the representation the sum from j equal 1 to n and you see i'm using a different uh, index here because i have already used the sum from j equal 1 to n uj ej the components uj in the old basis set ej and because the dot product is a linear operation i can basically re replace or take this inside and then I'm going to have to e dot i dot e j u j e dot i dot, uh, e prime i dot e j is actually the components of q q i j u j and so therefore u prime is actually equal to q u. There is a tool in the website that uh, lets you visualize the change of basis in uh, a two-dimensional vector space. If you go to the change of basis section. 2.1.4 in the website. If you scroll down, there's a matrix representation and change of basis. If you click on that, 
you're going to get to this tool, which unfortunately I cannot view in this video, but I will show you a picture of what it looks like. In this tool, you are able to enter the components of a matrix, and we were going to discuss this later when we talk about matrices, and the components of a vector, a general vector, you can input any components here. And the angle of rotation of a coordinate system, so the original coordinate system is E1 and E2. If you enter a new angle, it will give you a new coordinate system, E prime 1 and E prime 2, rotated by an angle theta degrees. So here we use 30 degrees. And now we want to compare the proper, the components of U in the old coordinate system and the components of U prime in the new coordinate system. As you can see, the, the, the blue a vector stays the same, we just have a different coordinate system. The coordinate system transformation is e prime 1 dot e1, e prime 1 dot e2, and so on. Now, e prime 1, which is the vector e prime 1, has components 0 0.866 and 0 0.5, and e prime 2 is negative 0 0.5, 0 0.866, and that came from the uh, angle of rotation, uh, or uh, this angle 30 degrees. And so these components are what are used here, because this is e prime 1 dot e1, so this is the first component of e prime 1, and this is the second component of e prime 1, first component of e prime 2, second component of e prime 2. And the components of u are 1 and 1. The new components of u prime are equal to the matrix q multiplied by the vector u. And later, when we study matrices, we're going to study how other the matrices change when I change the, the coordinate system from one orthonormal basis set to another.